We're here in Naples, Florida to come to the rescue of the Peel family. They're dealing with something we all hate, low water pressure. I feel for them. Let's go inside. I'm Alexi Panos. I love working as a model and TV host, but when I'm not here on set, I live a completely different life. We are turning extreme situations into extraordinary results. Our mission is to innovate, renovate, and elevate the lives of people in need. This is Operation Build. Well, the installation is almost complete and things are about to change. But let's hear about what life is like before. Hey, hey. Hi there, how are you? Good, where's Casey at? Here I am, right sorry, here. just finishing something up. So good to see you guys. I'm really excited about this project because when we first heard about your story, you know, you're a great family and you're a busy family. And I know low water pressure has kind of been killing your schedule. Tell me about that. It has, you know, especially in the evenings, boys want to take showers, I've got to do laundry, I've got to do the dishes, and I can't really do the dishes and laundry until they're done with their showers, so then I end up staying late trying to get it finished. No. And that's no fun. No. <laughs> and we, we use a lot of water in this house. We have two teenage boys, a dog and a cat. The boys go through laundry, like it's such unbelievable. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're doing dishes, the laundry is running, one of them jumps in the shower, we can notice the pressure drop. Yeah. Or when two people are in the shower, you have half the pressure, and it can be a bit of a pain. Totally. And isn't it crazy because it's something that you've just been living with and you've worked around, but there's a better option. And yeah. you don't have to live like this anymore. Absolutely. That would be good. <laughs> yeah. So the install is almost complete. We've got some great products out there, and I'm going to go learn all about them. And um, I just need your word that you're not going to turn it on and try it out yet. Absolutely, Thomas? we're looking forward okay. to seeing the results. Holding you to it. Okay, I'll be yeah. back. I'm here with Scott Satan from Franklin Electric. Scott, thank you so much for being here. I know the Peels have been suffering with low water pressure for a long time. Let's talk about the system that you installed for them. Uh, no doubt. On this installation, we put in the inline 1100, which mm -hmm. is a uh, constant pressure pump and uh, speeds up and slows down to keep a constant pressure into the home. And what's interesting about this installation is it's very similar to other installations in Florida as far as you need to treat your water before drinking it. Uh -huh. uh, this actually has a well pump uh, in the ground. One of our products is in the ground on this, providing water to the home. But what happens is it goes through an RO system, which is reverse osmosis, mm -hmm. and the water gets filtered first and settled out in a, a chamber, a tank. Okay, once that it's settled out in that chamber, you don't have any pressure to go into the home, so you need sure. to take another pump and pressurize it into the home, and right? push it through. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking this pump and we're pressurizing that and we're keeping it consistent. There's other pumps on the market like that, but what they do is they turn on and turn off at a certain point. Uh, and what this does is it keeps a constant pressure. That's right, so it's kind of like cruise control for it's water exactly pressure. It's exactly cruise control for your... So that's why this is a great product because, if I'm understanding correctly, other products turn on and off, so you can't really monitor how it's working if I want to do the laundry and wash the dishes at the same time. Right, exactly. What happens is you get a pressure drop, somebody's washing dishes, and then somebody goes and takes a shower. Right. The water pressure drops right then, or it drops for the person taking the shower. So it can be annoying. Some people don't realize that that's an issue for them. For sure. Uh, this pump will speed up and slow down and uh, keep it constant for them. That's so great. So what about other products? I know the Peels have a very specific situation mm -hmm. here being in Florida, but what about the Midwest, the Northeast, the West Coast? Well, there's a couple different situations. Somebody in the Midwest or the Northeast can have a well pump in the ground and they don't need to filter their water or do anything else with it. They just need to pump it right straight into the home, into a pressure tank. Uh, so what this is, this is our new subdrive, and it actually speeds up and slows down the motor in the well pump. Ah, and so that keeps like a this. constant pressure to the home as well. Cool. So we have a whole gamut of products that will, that will provide pressure to the home, boost pressure. Uh, most situations that you can run into with water, we have a product for it. That's so great. So the Peels in, in specifically have been sharing with me how it's so frustrating to plan their day as a family. You know, they come home, she wants to do laundry, but everyone's in the shower, so she can't. And it's like, okay, dishes need to be done. I could run the dishwasher, but people are in the shower again, so I can't. Right. So she's finding herself staying up later just to manage the water needs of the house. 
And that's, you know, I, I can imagine myself, I've dealt with low water pressure yep. and didn't realize I was dealing with it. And a lot of people do. Yeah. There's situations all over the United States where people don't realize that they have a low pro water pressure issue and they just deal with it. They, yeah. they live with it every day where there's all kinds of products out there that we have that can uh, fix that solution. I love that. So there's a solution to every problem. <laughs> and you happen to have a really great one. Yes. Well, great. Well, let's talk about installations. I know we had a group of professionals come in and it seemed like it happened really quickly. So tell me a little bit more about that. It usually takes a couple hours and it's really going to depend on, on where the setup is, where the plumbing's coming in. You know, one, one of the key things about these two products that we have here is they're in line. Okay. And that's different than other products on the market that may have a 90 degree uh, elbow need coming straight out of the top of the pump. Mm -hmm. uh, where ours are actually in line, it makes it very easy for the installing contractor or the plumber to bring the inline pipe coming in, go straight out the other side mm. of the pump makes it a little bit easier for installation and we designed them that way for that reason. That's great. Well, I know it didn't take you that long to put it together. I'm excited to see how it all works. So let's put these uh, these new products to the test. All right. You ready? Good. Yep. Okay. All right, Casey, I don't know if you know Scott, but this is the Prince of Pressure, the man behind the plan, changing your water pressure life forever. Thank you so much. We're really excited. Well, thank you for letting us do it. It's yeah. A great project. And they've really done an amazing job. So now it is the moment of truth. We've got Steve in the bathroom. He's going to turn on the tub and the shower. And now we're going to try this guy. All right, ready? All right, ready? Tub pressure looks good. Wonderful. Have you ever seen that? Not with anything else running. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question. Do you think we can get away with the dishwasher as well? Of course. Okay, let's put it on. Perfect. Nice. Mission accomplished. Nice work. Thanks to Scott from Franklin Electric for bringing the pressure back into the Peel's life. Next on Operation Build, a story that will truly light up your life. Stay tuned. 750 million people around the world lack access to safe water. Approximately one in nine people. Operation Build continues here in Boca Raton, Florida to see how lighting can change a home. Our team worked with American Lighting Association to turn good lighting into great lighting. Let's check it out. Eric, this is an amazing house you have here. Thank you very much. Lots of lighting in it, I noticed. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we think <laughs> Hi, so. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Alex. Yeah, I see you've met my sidekick, uh, Andrew uh, here. I'm yep. the one that show, I show up on time on like my... Uh, I noticed that. That's why I pay him the big bucks. Now, Eric, <laughs> do you know he owns, he owns a lighting company? Actually, I, I The do. president of Capital Lighting. Well, that explains why your home is so well lit and it's so beautiful. Why, thank you. Yeah, so tell me about the lighting in your home. Uh, we believe that the lighting is the most important piece of the puzzle. You have beautiful floors, beautiful walls, but if it's not lit properly, none of it looks as good as it should. Of course, of course. We're here to show the viewers how we can transform good lighting into great lighting. Mm -hmm. So we, I know we have another expert here. Yeah, actually the American Lighting Association is, is uh, uh, one of the great educational forums for people wanting to learn lighting in the profession and also for homeowners. And uh, Joe Ray Barreau is a phenomenal teacher and professor. I learned a lot from him as did many members of our staff oh, great. Uh, about how to light a home properly. Perfect, so we can pick his brain. Uh, if, he's, <laughs> if he's willing to have it picked, I guess that's perfect. All right, great, so we will see you later and we're gonna go find uh, Joe. Let's go find Joe. So this is beautiful. It is, it's amazing. Yeah, and I'm really excited we were able to do this and Eric's invited us in because I get so many letters from people about lighting. It's a really confusing aspect. There are so many choices, LEDs, complex fluorescence, yes. and then obviously the original incandescent light bulb. So exactly. knowing where to go is really important. Exactly, and then fixtures are such an easy way to update a space. Yes, yes. Yeah, which is why Joe is here. You must be Joe, I'm Alexi. Nice to meet Alexi. you. Great to meet you. <laughs> Joe, or Professor, may I call you Professor? That's all right. Nice yeah. to meet you. Good for me. So many, so many of our viewers are writing in and they have questions about light bulbs, LEDs, fixtures, where to start. So first let's start with why is lighting important in the home? 
Well, needless to say, we have to have lighting to see. So whatever else we have in the house, we have to have good lighting, ideally, to be able to see our furnishings and our flooring and all the other things in the home. And then lately, there's been just a tremendous amount of change in the industry, both from the technology and from the style part of the equation. Uh, there are now numerous alternatives that homeowners have in terms of either as incandescent, you have compact fluorescent, you have uh, LEDs, which are really taking over the, the lighting industry. Yeah. LED is actually an amazing technology. Uh, it's fascinating to me, and I do seminars where I show a slide uh, of Thomas Edison with his incandescent light bulb in 1879. 1879? 1879. Go. Yeah, wow. and if you think about all the things that we've invented since 1879, right. you yeah. have the airplane, the telephone, uh, as I like to say, even uh, waffle makers. Yes. Uh, but, the important you know, stuff. It, right. <laughs> In addition to all that, we still have been using uh, the same technology wow. for the last 140 years. Effective but inefficient, I'm guessing, the incandescent bulb. Very ineffective. Uh, in homes, it's actually been interesting. We have not used a lot of incandescent outside of homes mm -hmm. because energy efficiency has been more of a priority in commercial applications. But mm -hmm. in homes, we actually spent a relatively small amount of our energy on lighting, so it hasn't been a, as high of a priority. But sure. now the technology of LED is, is so positive and so comprehensive that really it's expected that by 2020, over 75 to 80 percent of all the lighting in homes will likely be some form of LED. Wow, so tell us a little about those positive benefits from LED. Uh, LEDs are amazing. They are uh, four to five times more efficient than incandescent. They last literally forever. Yeah, um, I love that yeah. because yeah. you don't have to change it all the time. I can do forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, we're talking about 35, 50 years potentially yeah. as a light uh, output. So you can pass your light bulbs onto your children, then, is what you're saying. <laughs> You literally can. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would be the worst gift ever. <laughs> yeah. Or the best. Or the, the best. best. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, gift of light. So, uh, technology is great, but as a female, I'm really interested in style and trends. So, tell me a little about the kitchen. Well, this is an amazing uh, kitchen, and it actually has a lot of the things that we talk about as standards that we should use in a kitchen. For example, we always talk about using three kinds of lighting, task, ambient, and accent. Uh -huh. One of the biggest mistakes that we see in a kitchen is that you don't have enough light sources, meaning sure. that you might have a single fixture in the center of the kitchen, yeah. which creates shadows yeah. as you kind of walk around the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So in this case, he has four layers of light. He has a recessed lighting, which actually serves both as task and ambient lighting. Mm -hmm. Then you have a decorative fixture, which would be a second layer over the island. Uh, that is actually supplemented with recessed lighting that actually is bringing light down onto the uh, island surface. Then you have under cabinet lighting, which is again task lighting, as we mentioned a minute ago. And then his fourth primary layer is his overhead light or his uh, above cabinet lighting for indirect lighting. Or we could also call it accent lighting since it actually is emphasizing things above the cabinets. That's and great. A, a kitchen being the, obviously a, a central point in the yeah. house is, is where you perhaps have the most types of lighting as well. Right, and what's great about that, because we do so many different things in a kitchen, I mean, we might just be getting up in the middle of the night and getting a, a, you know, a drink, or we might be entertaining, but the multiple layers, especially when they're all on different switches, allows you to create multiple effects in mm -hmm. the kitchen. So dimming is critical, and uh, it's something that not a lot of homeowners think of immediately. Uh, it's something, especially in a kitchen, we've always historically thought of dimming as something you did in the dining room. You mm -hmm. know, if you have a sure. chandelier, you put a dimmer on it. Yep. But now, especially with LED lighting, which is very easily dimmable, uh, you should put every single layer uh, on a dimmer. Uh, one important thing to remember though, if you're using dimming for LED lighting is that you have to make sure, and again, we talked earlier about going to an ALA showroom, you have to match the exact type of dimmer to the type of LED that you're using. And, and not just in general, but literally some specific fixtures you'll have, the manufacturer will give you a specific product number for a dimmer that they have to use. So that's yep. very important because that's created uh, some challenges sometimes. Yeah, and you know, as somebody who doesn't know that, obviously you've got a contracting background and you're the expert. For someone like me who, let's say, I'm redesigning my space, how would I go into something if I wanted a really interesting layering technique in my kitchen? How would someone like me go and design that? 
Well, that's one of the things that ALA showrooms also are able to provide is mm -hmm. that, I mean, there's actually a profession called the lighting design profession and ALA showrooms have professionals who can actually help you design your lighting. Okay. So it's much more than just, especially today with all the technology and all the various options, it's more than just choosing a light fixture or choosing a decorative fixture. It's a matter of identifying exactly what kinds of fixtures you need, where you need them, and all the various applications in the house where you might have different uh, needs for those kinds of products. So the function and the style are very important. You obviously know what the light's going to be used for and then you can start looking at types of lighting that will fit that need. That's correct. Uh, I mean, obviously in the end, I mean, everybody wants beautiful fixtures that you can look at, mm -hmm. you know, like decorative fixtures, but there's so many other things like recessed lighting, track lighting, under cabinet lighting, sure. uh, LED and direct lighting. They're very technical sometimes. And mm -hmm. uh, especially today, it requires really a guiding hand to be able to tell you exactly what you need and where you need to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. If not, it can feel overwhelming, I would assume. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Well, let's go check out some of the other fixtures in the home. Okay, terrific, okay. great. When we come back, we are going to see more fantastic lighting examples. Stay with us. Candles were invented in 3000 BC and remained the primary source of light well into the 17th century. Operation Build is here in Boca Raton, Florida with our expert on lighting design. Let's see more of this amazing home. All right, you guys, uh, you guys almost done? Almost done. <laughs> yeah. To work. yeah, I mean, honestly, this home is so beautiful and there's so many different ways to light and you've done such a great job of doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Joe, tell us about, I think this is pluralism in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> see, it's already catching on. I know, I love it. <laughs> Well, again, we have the same concepts that we talked about in the kitchen in terms of the multiple layers. Sure. So uh, we've got obviously the chandelier, which is the one thing that most people think about when we're dealing with the dining room. But then to supplement that light, we have a lot of other things happening. We have recessed lighting. In uh -huh. fact, a very interesting technique here is the fact that there are two recessed fixtures uh, that are actually towards the end of the table. Uh -huh. And by uh, these new accent lighting products that you can get with LED, you can actually select the beam spread. So mm -hmm. you can, for example, select a beam that's very tight on the table so that holidays and so on, right. you can actually emphasize uh, the china, the silverware. Makes wow. everything pop. That's great. Yeah. I need uh, pop. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We like pop for holiday time. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so then we also have some perimeter lighting that's actually being used uh, both for general lighting and for accent lighting um, in the, uh, on the sides of the room. And then a very, very interesting technique that is actually becoming very popular is the cove lighting effect. I love that. Uh, it's above the ceiling there that shines up onto the... Right. right. So that's usually an architectural detail that you have to work with the builder fairly closely to make sure that you have the right way of putting the lighting up, up there. But mm -hmm. that's another in, in, uh, excellent place to put LED lighting. Yeah. Because you can kind of put it up there, forget it. Right. Uh, you don't have to change it every You don't have to years. change it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then another very important uh, layer in this room are the wall sconces, which uh, as a lighting designer, it's one of the things that I always try to implement into most designs. Uh, it's something that many people don't think of immediately, is right. to use w uh, lighting on the walls. Uh, but it's always a very elegant technique. That looks, that looks amazing. It really it does. does. And, and speaking about it, you mentioned that trends kind of go in cycles, as they do in everything from clothing to furniture. Right. But let's talk about, you know, buying a major piece for your home. It's a big investment, right? Yep. You're not, it's not like you're changing out your chandelier every year. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. People, people do tend to buy lights about every seven years. Uh -huh. uh, that's when they, they redesign their home. We are in an era of self-expression like we haven't really seen with Facebook and, and uh, all the various social media channels. People want to share what they're doing in their home. So they feel the freedom to be a little bit different. Yeah. So they're able to use pluralism. Uh, to express many different facets of the personality. I love that. And you know, one of the things I really love about a company like yours is you've been around for a while. So you've seen trends come and go, you've worked in different homes, right. and you can obviously grow with the consumer as they're growing in their home needs as well. Yeah, we've worked with mothers, daughters, granddaughters, uh, and we've seen their tastes completely change. Uh, we've been around 90 years. Wow. Uh, so many of our sales associates have been with us decades, but even if they're new, they go through rigorous training so they know the advice to give, mm -hmm. thanks to this gentleman here <laughs> and, and the great ALA stuff that we, uh, that we avail ourselves to. Yeah. Now, what about the person who wants something new, wants something different, wants to express themselves, but they don't really know where to start, they don't know what their style taste is, what would you recommend for them? 
Uh, well, you come into the showroom, you have a conversation with a, a lighting specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, many times, most ALA showrooms will have the sales associate come back to your home to do a walkthrough, get to know your tastes, get to know the size of the space, and work with you to find the perfect piece for your space. That's perfect, I love that. So obviously, I mean, like I've said, you have just an amazing space. You've done a great job of showing different types of layering and pluralism. Now that I know those terms, I'm gonna use them. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> so thank you for opening up your home to us. We really appreciate it. And of course, thank you for sharing all your expertise. You're very welcome. Thank yes. You. All right, so you and I, we've got more work to do. I've learned a lot though. I have too. I'm very knowledgeable. <laughs> That must be new for you. How's it feel? Uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't exhaust yourself. All right, guys, we will see you soon, I'm sure. And thank you so much again for everything. This week was all about finding solutions for home improvement. And the amazing thing is, it's the small things that make the biggest difference in somebody's home. Ah, that is so true. So that being said, I would say that this is another mission accomplished. I'd agree. Awesome, high five on that. For Operation Build, I'm Alexi Panos. I'm Andrew Van Jumbo, and we'll see you next time. As always, if you know of someone in need or suffering a negative life circumstance, we hope you'll email us. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. <laughs>